Okay, broadcasting the solutions to the acid-base equilibrium quiz. An Arrhenius acid is defined as an H plus donor. An example of that is hydrochloric acid because it starts with an H. An Arrhenius base is a hydroxide donor. An example of that is sodium hydroxide because it ends in hydroxide. A Bronsted and Lowry acid is the same as an Arrhenius acid, but they referred to the H plus as a proton donor. An example is also hydrochloric acid, HCl. A Bronsted and Lowry base is broadly defined as an H plus acceptor, and this is anything that's negative can attract that H plus. Okay, so for example, hydroxide is also a Bronsted and Lowry base, but it's not restricted to hydroxide. CO3 2 minus, chloride, permanganate, anything negative can attract an H plus or accept an H plus. A Lewis acid, Lewis focused on electrons, so he opened it up to saying a Lewis acid is an electron pair or lone pair acceptor, and the standard example there is boron trihydride, because that little spot right there is open to electrons, trigonal planar. And a Lewis base is an electron pair acceptor, and that's really anything with lone pairs. So standard example is ammonia. There's the lone pair. Two, give an example of a chemical that behaves as both a Bronsted and Lowry acid and base. So there's an example of one. There is the acid part. There is the base part. This works because it can accept hydrogen ions or it can donate hydrogen ions. The seven strong acids, all you need are the formulas. HCl, HBr, HI, HNO3, HClO3, HClO4, and sulfuric acid, H2SO4. Define a strong acid fully ionizes, okay, another word for ionizes is dissolves in H2O, and that would mean a weak acid only partially ionizes or dissolves in H2O. In terms of a reaction, we could look at a strong acid, we'll put HS for strong, as it fully breaks in to H plus and S minus. These are aqueous because it's in water. Notice only this forward arrow because all it breaks into is H plus and S minus, and this completely goes away. A weak acid will do HW for weak, partially breaks up. So some of it breaks up and some of it stays like this. And you also get the H plus and the W minus. And this is who we would use equilibrium at, to study. Because of the presence of this double-sided arrows and this partial ionization, an equilibrium is formed between this and these two species. pH 0, 7, 14. This is the neutral range. This is the basic range. And this is the acidic range. The equation for pH is very simple. pH is the negative log of the concentration of the H plus hydrogen ions. Calculate the pH of the following strong acids. So all of these here are strong acids. And when we're dealing with strong acids, all you need to do is take the pH of the concentration of the acid. Because there is no equilibrium, 
it fully ionizes into H plus and Cl minus, and this concentration represents the concentration of the hydrogen ion. So pH equals the negative log, in this case, of 0.1, which equals 1. In this case, pH equals the negative log of 0.2, which equals 0.7. And in this case, pH equals the negative log of 0.1, which is 1. So it didn't matter what type of strong acid, as long as it was at the same concentration, the pH was going to be the same. And when we're dealing with weak acids, we saw in the previous problem that weak acids have these double-sided arrows and require an equilibrium problem. Anything that requires an equilibrium problem requires an ice table. So we're going to draw our ice table. HF aqueous breaks into H plus aqueous plus F minus aqueous. We're going to write our K expression, which is F minus multiplied by H plus over HF. Okay, we're going to set up ICE. The initial concentration of HF is the initial concentration given in the problem. 0.100 0, 0, minus X, X, X. And with all equilibrium problems, we're always given the initial concentration so we can jump right to it. And this X is so small that we can consider it 0 on this side. So this is simply just 0.1 and these are both x. Now the problem is asking for the pH, and the equation for pH is the negative log of the H+, plus. so we need to get the negative log of the H+, plus, which is x. So when we find x, we're going to go and take the negative log of x, and that's going to be the pH. So here's how we're going to go about doing it. We're going to plug these into the Ka expression. They gave us Ka, 3.39 times 10 to the minus fourth. And if we plug x in here and x in here, we get x squared over hf, which is 0.1 at equilibrium. And if we rearrange this for x and take the negative log of it, we get the negative log of the square root of 0.1 multiplied by 3.39 times 10 to the minus fourth. And the pH here is going to be around 2.2. Fairly acidic, but not as acidic as these because they were strong acids and this is a weak acid. For this problem, we're going to do the same exact thing. It's a weak acid. They gave us a Ka. HC2H3O2 aqueous breaks into H plus aqueous plus C2H3O2 aqueous we're going to do we're going to write our ka expression which is going to be c2h3o2 minus concentration multiplied by h plus concentration over hc2h3o2 and okay. we're going to do our ice table this is 0 0.1 0 0 it's going to shift right x x x we can assume that's close to 0 so we do that we then plug our numbers in 1.78 times 10 to the minus fifth is equal to x squared over 0.1. So if that's x and that's h plus, pH equals the negative log of x. So x is defined as the square root of 0.1 multiplied by 1.78 times 10 to the minus fifth and the pH is going to be around 3 in this case. Take care, guys.